Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 5, Lesson 6. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can find the volume of a figure composed of right rectangular prisms. The learning objective, find the volume of composed right rectangular prisms. In prior learning from third grade, the students expressed area and square units such as square meters, square inches, and square feet. And in fourth grade, students applied the area formula for a rectangle. All right, so we're going to be on page 117 for this lesson. And step it out, question number one. It says, Braden builds a frame in the shape shown. He plans to pour concrete into his frame. All right, so that's shown by the yellow figure over to the side. For A, it says, write the unknown dimensions of the composed figure and describe how you found your answers. Okay, so I know for a lot of you, this is the very first time you've ever seen anything like this, right? It's not a perfect square. We're going to have to make it two perfect squares and then um, find the individual volumes and put them back together to make this weird shape. Okay, so I am going to be using a lot of different colors and erasing. Just try to stay with me and try to follow me as I'm explaining. Okay, so... It says, write the unknown dimension. So if you see the box here, it's looking for the dimension here, right? We don't know what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all the other information that it gives me that's looking for the lengths left to right. So I know here I have one, I have one, and here I have five. Okay, so how am I going to find this length here that's missing? Okay, so if I take my five, because I know that's my complete total length, and I know this edge is one and this edge is one, what's the middle? Okay, so I'm going to show you that in the drawing. So if this is one and this is one and the whole thing is five, what is this part here in the middle that also matches here and here. You see here, here, and here are all the same lengths. So what is that length? Well, if I know the whole thing is five and the left and right portions are worth one, that means my middle portion has to be three because one plus three plus one is the total of five, which means here would be three and here would also be three. Okay, so that's my exclamation for the first one. I'm going to go ahead and erase it and make it a little bit cleaner so I can show you the next one. All right, so this one is three. Now what we're looking for is the other missing side, which is found here. Okay, so now I'm looking for all of the different heights so I can figure out that missing piece. So if you look at the arrow here, it's showing the total height of the entire shape is two. And the other height it gives me is one. This one's a little bit easier. If the whole thing is two and a portion is one, what's left over? One. Okay. So now that I know my two missing pieces, I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Now, I can move into the problem. So write the unknown dimensions of the composed figure, done, and describe how you found your answers. This can be something like, um, for the lengths, I did five minus one minus one is equal to three, and for the height, all I did was two minus one equals one. Anything like that. Um, if you want to describe it a different way in your own words, please feel free. Okay, so moving on to B. Draw a line to show how you can break apart Brandon's frame into two right rectangular prisms. I'm going to pause right there. This is the most important part with finding composed figures. You need to be able to find the line to break this odd shape apart into two rectangular prisms because we've already been working on that and we already know what to do with that. So in order to make it and um, break it, I'm going to put a line straight across. So I'm going to put a line here. Now I have this shape here and this shape here. I have my two right rectangular prisms. Okay. So 
Now that I drew my line, then find the volume for each prism, okay? So I'm gonna find the top volume and the bottom volume. All right, so for the top, I need to find my length, which we found that was the missing number, which was three. The width on how wide it was, right, that's here and here, these are all two, right? Finding that number here. So the width is two. And the height of just one of them, which was found here, that was our missing number of one. So the volume of the top is gonna be six, and then our unit is feet, and because we're finding volume, it is cubed, all right? Now looking at the bottom, the length, the total length was five, the width is still two. The width doesn't change in this problem because it's still the same amount of width, whether you're on top or you're on bottom. And the height is still, because it's just the bottom portion and the whole thing is two, each one is one. So the height of this one is also one. So the total volume here is gonna be 10, again, feet cubed. All right, so C, what is the amount of concrete that Brandon needs? Now, here's where a lot of students that I've taught in the past get a little bit confused. They find their six and they find their 10 and they turn in their answer. And I'm like, oh no, I'm so sorry, that actually isn't correct. You forgot the very last step, which is putting them back together, finding those two pieces and adding them together to find the total area of our odd composed shape. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to combine our top and our bottom. So if our top was six and our bottom was 10, that means our total volume for the composed figure is gonna be 16 feet cubed. And describe how you found your answer. I'm just gonna say that I combined top and bottom. Okay. Hopefully um, that was a little quick, but hopefully you were able to follow along so we can put it into practice with our next problem. All right, so in problem number two, it says Tori wants to use the design shown to build steps from solid blocks of wood. Find the amount of wood she needs to build the steps. Okay, because this is a very new topic, I'm gonna go ahead and just have you do one question at a time and then I'm gonna pause. Okay, so for A, it says draw a line to show you how to break apart Tori's design into two right rectangular prisms, and then find the length, the width, and the height of each rectangular prism. Okay, so you're only doing two things here. You're gonna draw your line um, on your shape so that you can make two different right rectangular prisms. That's the first thing. And the second thing, don't find the volume, you're just finding the length, the width, and the height for each box. Okay, so you're just finding those three numbers for both shapes. All right, so just do A, and then go ahead and pause here and join me back so we can solve. All right, coming back and doing A, the line that you should have drawn should have been right here. Because then if you see on the left, you have a short and wide shape, and then on the right, you have a taller, same width shape. Okay, so that was one, that was drawing my line. And then for, um, for the left side, my numbers would be my length. If this whole thing is 16 and this length is eight, that means this also has to be eight. So my length is eight. My width, the same width applies here. So both shapes are gonna be eight. So this is eight times eight, and then my height on the lower one is gonna be four, all right? And then on the right side, we know that the length is eight because it's shown here. The width is still eight, and the height for this one is also eight. So the numbers you should have found is eight times eight times four, and then the second bigger box is eight times eight, times eight, and that does make sense because they are the same um, lengths and they are the same widths, they're just different heights. So it makes sense that only one of the numbers is different. All right, now we're gonna try B. So what is the volume of each of your rectangular prisms? Here is where you are actually going to solve and multiply both numbers, 
Okay, so you're going to find the total volume for the left one and the total volume for the right one by multiplying all three numbers. Go ahead and try that now. All right, going to solve this problem. I know that 8 times 8 is 64, and that's going to work with both problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 64 times 4 for my first one. So 4 times 4 is 16, carry the 1. 6 times 4 is 24, plus one more is 25. So that first shape is going to be 256. Ooh, 256. And my units here are inches, so it's going to be inches cubed. All right, and then my right one is also going to be 64, because that 8 times 8, but now I'm multiplying it times 8. So 4 times 8 is 32, carry the 3. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 3 more is 51. So my second one is going to be 512 inches cubed. All right, I'm just going to erase my work for right now, just in case I need a little bit of extra room later on. All right, now let's try C. So write an equation to model the amount of wood that Tori needs to build the steps. Okay, so what this needs is you're looking for the total volume now. So this is a little bit simpler um, than it might seem, but you're going to write an equation on how to find the total volume for both. And remember from question number one, when we found our two individuals, how did we find the total for the entire shape? Okay, there's a little bit of a hint. All right, so I'm going to have you go ahead and try C here. All right, coming back. So for C, the way to find volume, again, is just adding those two numbers together. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our 256 and we are going to add it to our 512. Okay, that would be our equation. All right, now for D, it says, what is the amount of wood that Tori needs to build the steps? So here is where you're actually solving. So you're going to now add those two numbers together to find the total volume. Go ahead and solve D here. All right, coming back. So all we need to do is add these two numbers together. So 256 plus 512. So six plus two is eight. 5 plus 1 is 6, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So the total volume is going to be 768 inches cubed. All right, now for E, it says describe how you can check your answer using unit cubes. So if this would be a lot, but if we had unit cubes in the classroom, how could you prove hypothetically even, how could you prove that your number 768 is correct? All right, I want you to try and write your own wording um, in a complete sentence. Try and do E here. All right, coming back, hopefully you were able to think about that a little bit and say, I could use unit cubes in the classroom and know that for my first shape, if it's going to be 4 by 8, I can stack them full and do 4 high, 8 long, and 8 wide. And I know how many cubes that's going to be, and I can count them all, right? And hopefully it would be 256. And then for the next shape, I could do 8 by 8 by 8, and I could stack those all up, and then I would know it would be 512. And then when I added all of the cubes together, I would know it would be 768. No teacher is going to make you actually do numbers this big, but that's why we practice with a lot smaller numbers at the beginning, so that way we know the fundamental knowledge of what we're doing, and then we can start using formulas as the numbers get bigger, because there's no way we're going to sit there with 768 cubes and build it out. That would just be a little bit too long to practice. All right, so that is it for this lesson, for this module. Um, go ahead and finish out the rest of this lesson, and then I will see you back for module six.